Hey everyone, mm. Eric mm. and Abe from freelearner.how. Today we're making the perfect French fried potatoes straight out of the garden, into the fryer, into our mouths. Hope you enjoy and watch us make some French fries. Yeah. All right, let's pull a couple of these potatoes for our French fries. I don't recall what type of potatoes are in this row, I'll know shortly. Norlin, Norlin Ray. All right. How many potatoes do we need for fries? Uh, it's just the two of us, so I'm thinking two or three potatoes. Times 100? Times 100? Oh. <laughs> Actually, looks like the moles got to that one. Yeah, they took a little bite out of this one, too. A little bite's fine. We'll just, oop, there's another one. So, you guys missed a missed a video. We uh, ate MREs today, and it had a pretty delicious meal. Actually, it was super tasty. We'll uh, make another video about that. Yeah, there's a big one. Here we go. And one more there. Oh, that one has a big one. Yeah. yeah. Problem with late season potatoes. Oh, babies. All right, I think we're set. Let's go make some uh, french fries. All right. Okay, so for these french fries, we've uh, brought some potatoes in just, that we just pulled out of the garden. We're uh, not storing these. We're just going straight to uh, to make our food. Uh, we're going to leave the skins on. So Abe is uh, going to give these a good scrub. There's uh, some potato brushes there. We want to try and get it nice and clean because dirt does not taste good. Yeah. I learned that when I was three. Actually, probably one, but I don't remember. So I had to learn that lesson several times. <laughs> Some of these have a few bad spots on it. We're not worried about that at all. We're just going to cut those spots right off. The rest of the potato is just fine to eat. That is one of the issues with leaving the potatoes in the ground. It's now November. Uh, I should have gotten these all out of the ground last month, but I still have a few plants in. That's okay, though. So I asked uh, Eric, uh, I had some potatoes at home that had green, they were green all the way through, and I was wondering if those were good to eat. Ah, and okay. Good, good question. Green potatoes. So uh, uh, potatoes, as, as many people know, have a naturally occurring oh. toxin uh, in the, uh, predominantly in the leaves. And it's really uh, something that's evolved to help protect them from animals who would uh, eat the top of the plant. Um, the potatoes themselves grow underground. They do not develop the toxin. Uh, where the toxin is developed is in the parts of the plant that are exposed to sunlight. So anywhere that the plant uh, goes in, develops cells to photosynthesize, are often where the toxins develop as well. So the general simple rule of thumb is, if it's got any green on it, just cut that green piece off. If the green goes all the way through, it really means that that potato grew on top of the dirt rather than underneath the dirt, and you should just toss the potato. It's not going to kill you, um, but uh, it uh, can kind of make you sick to your stomach, uh, so it's something you want to avoid. So instead of uh, leaves a three, let it be. If it's uh, if it's green, let it be. If it's green, or let cut it, it off. Be. If it's green, cut it off. There you go. Okay. All right. Unfortunately, I bought those potatoes uh, at the grocery store, and it was like two days, and then they all turned green. What the hell? They turned green afterwards, huh? Well, probably not. I'm not a potato expert, so <laughs> probably bought the wrong potatoes. They were in a bag. I pulled them out, and I was like, you know. They looked fine at the time, but then they were not. It's been a little while since I've done uh, Norlin Red for uh, French fries, so we'll uh, we'll taste these and see how they are. This French fry recipe is the one that uh, recipe recipe. Uh, it's uh, singular, not plural. Um, <laughs> is uh, one that I did last night with uh, some of Red Pontiacs, and uh, I think I also chucked in a Warba. Um, Normally, your typical French fried potato would be something really starchy like a russet. Um, I find that I like doing uh, a, a few potatoes, kind of mixing varieties sometimes, and uh, doing something that's a bit waxy as well. 
um, because I think it helps to kind of give a, a, a nice consistency, and it's something a little different than your, uh, um, you know, mushy russet. Cool. Those are looking pretty good. We'll go yeah, we'll cut, cut, cut off the bad spots, and cut then we'll cut down. them up. Yeah. All right, we got our potatoes, and I'm going to go cut these up. Uh, we're going to hand cut these. I I just think it's fun kind of hand cutting it. I do have a uh, julienner uh, that I can just push it all through and, and get the really consistent fries. Um, but uh, I, th I think it's a little bit more fun to just kind of cut them up and, and have a little more hand cut to it, which is what we're going to do now. Um, you can see we've got a few with bad spots like this guy right here. It's okay. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to take those bad spots off. We don't want to eat any of those. We'll just put those in the compost. And then I'm going to leave the skin on these guys because I think uh, a little bit of skin gives it a nice extra flavor. That's right. Everybody loves a little. Everybody loves a little skin. A little more skin. And we'll do nice. Consistent. What would you call that? Maybe about seven mil, give or take. Mm. Give, or, give or take. Put it's quarter inch. <laughs> quarter inch. We're not going for complete accuracy here. That also helps us to have a few that are crunchier and a few that are not so crunchy. So everyone gets what they like. We just don't want it to be too thick because we don't want any that are uh, completely uncooked. While I do this, would you get a Tupperware container out of that drawer there, the second from the bottom? and uh, go fill that about halfway with water. Do you want fridge water filtered? Uh, warm water out of the tap is just fine. So the reason for the water while we don't need to do that necessarily with these because they're fresh out of the garden, uh, your store-bought potatoes uh, have actually been out of the ground generally for months. And sometimes as a result, their moisture content is a bit lower. So what I like to do, uh, if I'm, especially if I'm using store-bought potatoes, is give them a good uh, five minutes inside a bowl of water and that'll help to make sure that they've got uh, just a good moisture content if things are a little on the low side. So what what's the reason why you want to have everything be the same as far uh, as your size goes? Uh, just so they cook consistently. Okay. If, if we've got uh, some that are thicker than others, then uh, they'll cook at different rates. Okay. So this is not a bad spot. It's just a, a just a funny shape that's grown into this one. So I'm not even going to cut that bit off. We'll save that. Um, the potatoes that you get in the store are visually ready for consumers to serve. They don't like to have anything that even just looks unattractive. Um, so any potatoes normally or any produce typically that just simply looks unattractive will get set aside for uh, things like animal feed or um, processed foods, uh, things like, you know, uh, um, uh, flour. Okay, so there we go. I've got these sitting in this container of water. We'll let that sit for about five minutes while the oil heats up. All right, I haven't set these in yet. They're just getting ready to go. I've got my oil heated up initially. We actually do fry them twice, not once. Initially, fry them at about uh, 325 or so degrees. Um, uh, that's a little lower temperature. And the intent there is we want to get them cooked all the way through and make them soft and 
um, uh, and cooked all the way through. And then what we do is we crank it up to about 375 uh, and do a finish it for a few extra minutes. And that way it gives it a little bit of crisp on the outside. So the idea there is we've got some crisp on the outside, um, but still soft and chewy and gooey in the center. Uh, so I've got my pan, I'm ready to go in. We'll go ahead and drop it in now. Um, as, as I do, you'll kind of see, I'll, I'll just sort of jiggle it a little bit um, just to help make sure that uh, the potatoes aren't stuck together when they go in so that they all cook separate. Um, and then uh, we'll wait. This initial fry will probably take, I'm gonna guess at this thickness, maybe uh, seven or eight minutes. So we'll kind of just speed through the video and uh, you'll be able to see them cook. So here we go. All right, so right now, mostly what you're seeing is, uh, is boiling action because they are very wet when they initially go in. So that's most of what the initial cook does. Um, and uh, normally I, I do it with a lid on here just to kind of help keep the heat. Um, but uh, it was only four potatoes that got stuck in there, so they'll, they'll be fine keeping the heat. Uh, and this way you can kind of see them as they cook. Um, you can tell, Abe and I were just talking about uh, some of the differences in uh, what you see and hear as the potatoes uh, are getting close to done in the first fry. So right now, a lot of boiling as the moisture boils off, um, but uh, as it gets close to being done with the first fry, the moisture content will be greatly reduced in the potatoes. So what you'll end up with is uh, the, the sound, uh, a lot less of a vigorous boil as there's much less moisture. Um, and also the thing that I tend to look for is uh, the density of the potatoes. So right now they sink in the oil because they are mostly water and they sink down in the oil. Uh, but uh, when they get uh, done with the first fry, they'll actually float. Um, so that's kind of the big key that I look for is once they start floating, I know that they're done with the first fry and I can go ahead and pull them out uh, and heat up the oil for the second fry. I do have a, a second unit on this fryer here. If I was doing a larger batch of them, I'd get the second unit going at the higher temperature and then I can just swap between the two. Um, so if we've got a company over, then I can, I can make a good deal more. Um, but since it's just the two of us and we've got uh, uh, just a small thing of potatoes, uh, I've only got the one going today. So you can see that now in the video, the potatoes are getting closer to the top now. Uh, so I know that they're getting close to done with this first fry. There's still quite a bit of moisture though, a lot, of, a lot coming off, but it's, it's pretty obvious now the amount that are on the, on the top there. Um, very gently, I just kind of agitated a little bit just to help make sure that uh, there aren't any sticking together. Um, you do want to be really careful, of course, with uh, any time you're working with hot oil, just because it, it, it can be quite dangerous if it gets spilled. Um, so just very gently uh, agitating it just a little bit. What oil did you use? Uh, the oil that we're cooking these in is a peanut soy blend. Um, peanut oil, I, I think, is the best, but pure peanut oil can be quite expensive. Um, and since we've got a fair quantity here, doing a, a blend kind of helps to keep the cost a little low. All right, so uh, we're looking pretty good now. I'm, I think I'm gonna call this for the first fry. So I'm just gonna pull them out and set them on the edge here of the fryer. Pretty much every fryer has got a nice edge spot you can set it on. And then I'm gonna turn this up to 375. Um, that'll take a few minutes to heat up, so I'm just gonna let it kind of sit there as we go. And then once it goes to 375, we'll go right back in. All right, so we are up to 375, and I'm going to go ahead and put these back in for the second fry. Similar to last time, I'm going to get them in good and just kind of agitate them a little bit so they don't stick together. Um, this time probably won't take as long as last time. I'm going to venture a guess that uh, it'll probably be in about the four to five minute range. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, I'd say, spotting them uh, this time than the first fry, just because uh, we really are, are going for crispiness now, and you can't see crispiness, as you can 
see them float. Um, but uh, generally, I'm just sort of looking for browning. Like I said, four or five minutes is, is sort of typically what you're looking for. If you want more crispy, a little longer. If you want less crispy, a little less. All right, these are looking uh, pretty good now. I think we're going to go ahead and pull those. So we'll move you over and get a good shot at the uh, plate where we dress these guys up. Finishing off, we just dump them out on a plate with some paper towels to sop up the extra oil. And I'm going to sprinkle these with granulated dried garlic. And my favorite... Applewood smoked sea salts that I get from a local shop here. Give it a good smattering of that wonderful smoky salt. I wish you could smell that through the uh, through the camera. Wonderful. All right, there we have it. That is the best French fries, right out of the garden, right to the table. Enjoy. Oh, and uh, click like and subscribe. Sure. Side note, do not put ketchup on these fries. It just ruins it. Come on, people. It's got garlic and smoked salt. Eat them like they are.